Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at an Atlas model 618, also a it's the same lathe as a Craftsman model 101 lathe and these are from the oh I guess they ran from the 40s, 50s, 60s. This one probably dates from the 60s or 70s, something like that. Uh, and I think they were discontinued right around the 1980s. Anyhow, this is an older uh, full-featured small quality lathe, 6 inch nominal six inch lathe okay so let's try this thing out let's see how she runs let's actually reverse come in here and give it a little bit of a cut This lathe would have originally come with a rocker style tool post. I think this was an add-on, this four-way tool post. Uh, you know, before the days of quick change tool posts, this would have been uh, kind of the, the style. Um, it's got a nice little set of features here, very much like a regular full-size lathe, much like my South Bend 10K. <clears throat> got a threading dial. Here is the traverse engagement. There's the uh, the tail stock here. There's the tail stock lock. This is very high class. <laughs> Something I just threw together. Took an 11 uh, wrench and cut off the other end of it. So that works for that. <coughs> and I think this was standard. This is about a half inch uh, drill chuck on this thing, so that's kind of standard. Okay, here's a look at the uh, belt drive for this thing. As you can see, this lever arm tightens this belt and this belt over here at, at the same time. And you can, of course, change the speeds here. You've got a set of, uh, well, two speeds here and four speeds here. So that's a total of eight different speeds, not counting the back gear. Back gear, of course, adds uh, double that. So you got a lot, a huge range of different speeds here. Um, now let me show you how the back gear thing works. There's a pin here. Somewhere. Right down in there is a pin. Probably you'll be able to see that. So you pull that pin out. Now this is free to turn, so then you engage this. Mesh the gears. So you mesh the gears. Now we've got it in back gear. So this is going to turn and everything is slowed down considerably. If I want to change speeds on this lathe, change the drive speeds, I've got a set of change gears here. Uh, these are uh, fairly inexpensive. They're a metal, a uh, Zamac, kind of a weak metal, but they're not under a great deal of stress. So they're usually is not too much of a problem with that. I haven't found too many broken ones. Anyway, you rearrange gears here and you've got the banjo and the whole bit. So it's a pretty standard kind of a thing to change the speeds here. Got forward and reverse here. It's like that. Okay, so you got forward and reverse drive here. And uh, on the inside, you've got a whole set of speeds you can set it for and it shows you and uh, gives you a visual representation for how to change the speeds on this thing it's all right there full featured back geared lathe very nice very nice features okay i have this lathe set at the slowest possible speed which is about 54 rpm and i'm going to try and cut some threads here Going.
This lathe could of course accept many accessories including, of course, I think it, they all came with a faceplate like this. It's a nice faceplate. Turn between centers or mount something on the faceplate. This is a four jaw chuck. This is not uh, original Atlas Craftsman. This is a bison aftermarket. Four jaw chuck is one of the most important accessories you can have for a lathe. Very, very useful. Matter of fact, if you only have one chuck, get a four jaw. Uh, it's really more important than the three jaw. Here's something that's kind of unusual um, and it's very, very nice. This is a Jacob style chuck that threads on. I think it's uh, one by ten. Anyway, this allows you to hold very small objects very firmly. Very nice. It's, I, I found that these are much better than collets for thin stuff, thin material, a quarter inch or three-eighths of an inch or something like that. So that's a, a very, very nice little thing to have. Here's another nice additional thing, carriage stop. If you're cutting uh, to a particular point, it's very nice to be able to measure that accurately. If you're going to do any milling, there are a couple of things you're going to need. The first one is going to be a milling adapter like this. This will go through the headstock and turn the lathe into a milling machine. This adapter, this one in particular, is set up to accept half inch end mills. Um, and there are adapters, there's a whole set of adapters. For instance, uh, for example, a 3 8 you can get a 3 8 adapter, or you could, I'm not sure if you can still buy those. Anyway, you can get a 3 8 inch adapter, put a 3 8 inch end mill in there, etc. I'll show you how this works when it's all set up. Here are a couple of other useful accessories. This is um, a steady rest. It goes on like so. And you can use, uh, use that for working on the end of a longer piece. And let's see. This is a this is a follow rest. Uh, it goes on here. Uh, you have to take some stuff off there, and it goes on there. And you can use that for uh, supporting something that's long and thin. All right, let's let's put this in. Pretty simple. All you have to do is. Of course, if you're going to change any gears or anything, you want to do that now before you put this whole thing together. So once you put this together, you can't open that door. Tighten it down pretty good. Now we've got our end mill holder. End mill goes in there like that and locks down. This is the milling attachment. The milling attachment will attach right here. And this uh, milling machine attachment has several degrees of freedom. You can move it this way, move it that way. In and out, of course, and you can also change the orientation here, like so. Okay, I've set the thing up uh, so it's turning at uh, maybe a thousand RPM, just a rough guess. Let's give it a shot and see what it does.
So you can see we have a limited amount of milling capacity with the milling attachment. Anybody with experience using a milling machine is going to tell you that this is not optimal. This is not a really great solution. It's only a compromise. It's only a way to mill some, uh, do some very limited milling on small pieces. Uh, and it's at least taking very small, very light cuts uh, if you're working on a large piece. So it's quite limited in, with that respect. Um, but it's not bad to have that option to be able to do milling in a, a small sense, in a small scale. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the Atlas 618 Craftsman 101 lathe. Thank you very much for watching.